Hello everyone, it is I, Republic Studs, and welcome to the most minifigure heavy LEGO Star Wars wave quite possibly ever. What is up guys, it is I, Republic Studs. So here is the entire LEGO Star Wars January slash March LEGO Star Wars wave, obviously the winter wave as a lot of us like to call it. And this is great. Now this was divided up into two sections. Obviously we have the initial January wave, which consists of a lot of Hoth sets, the minifigure packs, the $10 sets, and then obviously we did get the March sets uh, with the Jabba's Palace and the Dark Trooper attack. There are of course helmet sets, but we are not doing 18 plus sets in these. I am going to do an entire video at the end of the year dedicated entirely to the 18 plus sets of 2022. Now, a few quick facts about this entire wave. If you want to buy every set, including the micro ATST, it is going to set you back $255. And on top of that, you're getting a total of 25 minifigures between all of the sets, which is quite frankly insane for that price, I will say. We also have a total of 15 completely exclusive minifigures in this wave, which is much better than last year's with a mere three exclusive minifigures. So either way, what we're going to be doing today is taking a quick look at each set, about 30 seconds, and then after that, I am going to be giving you a full buyer's guide for what I think are the best sets from this whole wave, as well as what I would like to see more of and things along those lines. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button as we are going for 31,000 subscribers, and I will get right on into it. So here is all of the box arts for all the sets this year. Obviously, they introduced the new theme where they put the characters in the bottom corner. So for the original trilogy sets, you have Vader, you have Boba in the corner of sets like, you know, Boba sets. You have Mando and Grogu in the set of, in the bottom corner of those. And then we obviously have the minifigure packs, which are a category of their own. A weird thing I will say with the Mando fighter, they did not put a mini Mando and Grogu up top, probably not to be so misleading. It'd be like, oh, Grogu comes in this, because I, I can see how that could be, you know, misconfusing. Uh, but as for the rest of these, obviously it's very, very neat. I absolutely Absolutely love this new design and I do want to quickly take a look at the minifigure packs which really nailed the designs. Obviously here you have depicted the Battle of Hoth and Geonosis of said battles and I think they really nailed it. It looks really good and you get a look at all the figures and everything. I uh, just love the way they designed those two and they are obviously brand new this year for LEGO Star Wars and hopefully will be continue to be a staple. We also of course do have the poly bag design has Vader in the corner and the reason I do look at the box art and most other people don't is specifically because I want to show you what it looked like uh, when these sets were on shelves. So like 20 years from now, people can come back and look and be like, oh, that is what that looked like. That's pretty dang cool. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty neat. Anyway, let's move into our full look at all of the sets. So our first set is set 30495, the Micro Hoth ATST. Only 79 pieces, not a crazy set, not my favorite. It has very minor features. It twists its head, it moves its legs a little bit. It's nothing super special. I don't want to spend too much time on it to be 100% honest because it's just not really that special. And some people, you know, hard. it's hard for them to even call it a 2022 set for the simple fact of it, you know, just being a poly bag. Next up is the Ahsoka Brickheads, set 40539, a 10-plus set with 164 pieces. Again, $10, the 150th Brickheads, and it is really nice. It's a great little $10 mini display thing. It, again, the Funkos are cool, uh, so, you know, if you're into Funkos, this is obviously great for you. And again, it's Clone Wars, which is awesome. It's a fun build. It's really neat, and, you know, really nice for a Brickheads. I think they nailed it. It looks just like Ahsoka. Strongly recommend, especially if you are a big Clone Wars fan, it's a nice, cheap $10 set. Now next up is set 40557, the Defense of Hoth minifigure pack. It only came with 64 pieces, $15. Again, it's a great little value if you buy one of these, but if you buy any more, it's just harder to army build. You're obviously going to switch out faces, so that way, you know, it's more diverse because the problem is when you have this type of thing. And this is a problem all Rebel Battle Packs have, really, that don't involve aliens. They all have, you know, the, the, the face problem. Uh, but either way, over there, you do get some really, really cool e-webs. I am not the biggest fan of them, just for the simple fact of them being way too simple. And they need to stay consistent with one e-web design. There's been, like, three this wave alone. And we'll discuss that in a second. And then we also do get the little dish turret, which is kind of a lackluster build. But, you know, you can't really expect too much for builds with these until we get into the next set, which just has fantastic. Now, here is our next minifigure pack. This is at 40558, coming with 66 pieces, three minifigures, again, retailing for $15. The Clone Trooper Command Station pack, coming with three Clone Troopers, one of which being a one that appeared in the gunship. That is not a thing we will really talk about uh, here. But I 
either way, you do get two of these great guys. And some of the most awesome minifigure pack builds I think I've seen. This is just a great mini clone command station. You get loads of details on it, which is awesome. You also do get a mini weapons rack, which is great, because they already come with weapons, so then you get double weapons, which is just fantastic. Just a fantastic value at $15, 5 bucks a clone. You know, easy way to build up a Phase 1 clone army, which you haven't really been able to do for a long time. So, very cool set. Now here is what a lot would argue is a UCS AT, AT set expansion set, and this is the Hoth Snowtrooper Battle Pack, a $20 price, already coming with 105 pieces, 75320, again ages 6 and up. Uh, you do get one exclusive figure in the form of that Scout Trooper, and it's also very cool because you get that speeder, that's the same one that appears in the UCS AT, AT, and it is missing two slots on there, so you could buy two of these, fill the speeders up, and then you can buy about 12 of them to fill up the entire thing, there are seats all over it. And if I was being 100% honest, I think it's a good idea to wait until this one goes down to say 16, 15 on sale. It's again, only a four figure set. Also, the E-Web comes with a new stud shooter, and I hate it. I, I, I don't like that. So, let's move into the next one. Here is the Micro Fighter Razor Crest, uh, 98 pieces, $10, 75321, ages 6 and up. Uh, the build itself, you know, nothing to write home about. It's a Micro Fighter build. It looks kind of derpy with those new flat stud shooters. Really, what you're getting these for, obviously, is and forever and always the minifigures. And this is a great minifigure inclusion. You're getting arm printing on a, you know, set like this. You don't usually get arm printing in $10 sets. So it's really nice that they're coming in this affordable one. Obviously, you know, this isn't the first set Mando's come in, and I bet a vast majority of you watching this already own one, if not several, Mandalorians, which is why I feel like this is kind of, you know, a missed opportunity. It would have been better, say, last year. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's an alright set. It, it does its job, so if you don't have Mando, get this. If not, I'd hold off. Next up here is the tallest set of the wave. This is the Hoth ATST, infamous for its blind look, where it just doesn't look like it has eyes. Obviously, it's at 75322, ages 9 and up, coming with three minifigures as well as a probe droid, which is often forgot about. Uh, you know, 586 pieces, very cool. Uh, you do get all of these are technically exclusive. You know, they have mild variations of, say, Chewy, who has the white on him, the snow. You also have the Walker pilot and the Rebel soldier. Lady, she is very cool, and you know, it's an alright set, it's 50 bucks, I'd honestly wait until this one goes down to 40, which I'm almost certain it will, if it hasn't already, to be 100% honest. It's a neat set, but you know, it's it's just not my favorite, it goes along well with the UCS at, -AT and that's about all I have to say about that set. So here, guys, is the next set, this is set 7532 for the Dark Trooper Attack with 166 pieces, 4 minifigures, ages 8 and up, retailing for, again, $30, a Phenomenal set. You're getting three Dark Troopers, not new. They were in the Moff Gideon Cruiser, but they still are sick. Plus, you have Luke Skywalker. Obviously, here, this is the famous scene where Luke comes in and chops up some Dark Troopers. It's a fantastic set. It really is. It's a location, which we hardly get. You get tons of cool play features. And for a $30 value, it feels like you're getting a metric ton here. Some people have said this is overpriced. I do not think that. I think it is a great price for what you are paying for this particular set. It's, it's really fantastic. They really nailed it home. Just a really cool set in my opinion. Next up here is at 75326, Boba Fett's Throne Room coming with 732 pieces, retailing for $100 already on sale at Costco for 80, coming with seven minifigures, which is insane, all of which being exclusive technically except Boba and I guess Fennec kind of is exclusive because she does not come with her helmet in this variant but comes with hair. It's a neat set. I like this one a lot. I know, hot take, a lot of people don't like this one, but I think it looks great. It is his throne room. It is not his palace. Uh, the palace exterior, I guess, is just, I guess, a nice add-on in my opinion. Either way, as for the figures, I'm trying to focus on them here. You do get some great ones. You get the Gamorrean and the best figure, in my opinion, the Quarren, which is just fantastic. I absolutely love this thing, and it's a brand new exclusive mold for a character or design we have not seen interpreted in LEGO Star Wars. Obviously, this is based off of the end scene of the Mandalorian, where they go to shoot up the, uh, you know, throne room, which is really kind of cool. So, with that said, let's get into my five. Final thoughts. Now we are going to be getting into the top three sets of the year. Now starting off first at number three, we have the Clone Command Station. Obviously, Clone Troopers are a very coveted uh, LEGO Star Wars item, and this was a great way to get them. Now, this is obviously a very flawed set, namely that yellow Clone Trooper returning, that Clone Commander from the gunship, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but beyond that, it is still great. You are getting effectively 
$5 per clone trooper, which is a really good bargain. It is our first interpretation of the new Phase 1 style of clone trooper, and it's a really good army builder. And you know, we haven't gotten these very much other than the File First Battle Pack in recent memory, so it's nice to start seeing these come back, and I think it's a great value for, you know, $15, and hopefully it'll go down soon. Now, at number two, right here, we have Boba's Palace. I know, hot take for a lot of people. I personally still adore this set. I think it's really awesome, and specifically Boba's Throne Room. Uh, it's not his palace, because I keep making that mistake, and really what you're buying this set for is the Throne Room. That is the name of the set. Uh, you're not buying it for the exterior, and if you are, I guess you're just, that's not what it's supposed to be bought for. But either way, obviously, it comes with seven great exclusive minifigures in some way other than Boba. They are all fantastic. Uh, you know, I say a personal, this has the best minifigure of the wave, the Quarren, an exclusive mold, a fantastic, you know, character uh, and design that's been long overdue from LEGO Star Wars, and we finally have one, which is absolutely fantastic. I love LEGO Star Wars Aliens, and that was a much necessary inclusion for us to get at some point in time. And you also get other cool minifigures in this set, like the Gamorrean, which we haven't gotten since 2013, and it's a brand new print and everything, which is really great. And then finally, overall, just best overall value, best set, I believe to be the Dark Trooper Attack. I think it is fantastic, it is original and new, you are getting a little section of the hallway, which is a perfect build, they didn't throw in any stupid builds, it was just a nice, simple vignette of the hallway that Luke, you know, killed them all in. It came with lots of plate features, and it came with three Dark Troopers and Luke Skywalker for only $30, which is a phenomenal deal, and I think one of the best... I have seen, and I think it's just great. Again, it fits in the same kind of deal as the File First Battle Pack, which again, I, as in a set, I am very fond of, so I, I am going to be biased here. And it, it is great. It is, it is really a great set. I really like it. $30, it's an insanely good value. Everyone should pick up at least two of these just to have a solid six star troopers, in my opinion, and maybe set up a second hallway. Now we have to go negative with the worst sets. Now the first one, I guess technically it would be uh, the Micro ATSD. I'm just not a fan of this. I think for $5 it's a scam. You don't get any figures. Harry Potter sets get figures, so there's no excuse for them not to include, say, a Snow Trooper in this type of set. Or they should have just done a minifigure. Like, really, I don't like these particular builds. It's not appealing at all. Uh, but realistically, a lot of people aren't going to count that one, so I'll do another one. And I'm going to go controversial here. I'm going to say the Defensive Hoth minifigure pack. Not that it's necessarily just the worst thing, but the builds, first off, are not the most exciting, unlike, you know, say, the clone pack or other sets along those lines. And the figures are not entirely army buildable. Uh, you know, you do get, you know, humans, but, you know, like, these are made to be army building sets. And humans, when you have all the face prints, it doesn't really work out well because you have an army of three different people, and it just it doesn't work out well. They should have probably included some extra heads so that way you could, you know, swap out faces. I think that would have been sick. And, you know, maybe they could do different types of face prints on each side of the face just to switch it up, because why not? I, th I think that would be great, where, like, you know, one character has a beard, and on the other side, he doesn't have a beard. That would just kind of be kind of funny to me. I'd, I'd really like that, actually. And it allows you to know, have your army look a little bit better if you want to have a fully, uh, you know, diverse rebel army instead of having just three of the same characters. However, I still would recommend picking up at least two of those, because they're still a decent set. If that's the worst one that comes in this wave, it's really not that bad of a wave, and it's certainly an improvement on last year's. Now, the reason I didn't put the ATSD and Snow Trooper Battle Pack on here is because the Snow Trooper Battle Pack, of course, uh, you know, it's not anything entirely new. Snow Troopers are not special, really, to me in any way. And, I, you know, you could put them up there. I could see it be justified, but they also raised the price to $5, which I thought was kind of uncalled for. And then the ATSD is just repetitive. We literally just retired the ATSD Raider, and we had the Rogue One ATSD not all that long ago. Uh, so, overall, you know, it's just an alright set. The figures all in it are all alright. I just wanted to go with the more creative sets. And again, this is still a, you know, Boba Fett's palace. This is still a flagged thing that, this is still a mainstay thing from the Book of Boba. It's a main ship or main, you know, place. So, I think that's why I really just kind of want to give it credit it deserves. Now, if I had to give you a best value here today... It, it, it's a mix, I will say, between the Dark Trooper attack set as well as the Clone Trooper command station. Uh, just because simply you could add them up, they're a really good value, I like the bricks. But if you're going to go purely off minifigures, which this is a very minifigure-centric wave, the only thing where the you know set is really focused on over the figures is probably the ATSD. Uh, and, and that is why these two are up here. Now, basically, this is half the price. The Clone Battle Pack is half the price, so you could get essentially two of these you get four plain white clone troopers for the value of three dark troopers, which is why I have to give the best overall value 
to the Clone Trooper Command Station set, uh, which is great. And obviously, you know, if you don't count minifigure packs, then it's going to go to the Dark Trooper Attack set. Another great value here, I will say, is Ahsoka. It's a nice little display model. There's not a ton of crazy play features. It's just a great little model. Support Clone Wars. Go out and buy these. They're all good sets. There's not one of these I would really say to wait on. Other than the Snow Trooper Battle Pack, wait for that to go on sale. They're all, other than that, really nice sets. And yeah, I would strongly recommend pretty much every one of these, other than maybe the Razor Crest Micro Fighter. But, you know, I don't know if you already have a Mando or not, because if you don't have Mando, then get that. But if you do have Mando, don't bother. It's not that good. But either way, I want to hear your favorite set from this wave, as well as your favorite minifigure. Do you think it's the Quarren? Do you think it's someone else? I want to hear. With that said, I'll see you all in the next one. Remember to peace out and stay awesome.